What's happening? Boy, you can definitely tell it's Friday. Friday afternoon. We're like at half the number of people that are normally on this 4.30 call. <laughs> so either people started drinking early and they're just not able to get to their computers <clears throat> or they're, they're napping, or perhaps they're just late. Oh, so there's two more people, right as, right, right as I said that. I love that. I love that. All right, so let me give you a quick, uh, a quick update as to where things um, uh, stand today. So uh, I know that you've heard this each of the last couple of times that we've had a conversation. Um, New York licensees. New York is off again. I know they were off, and then they were on, and then they were questionable this morning, and now, so now officially you're off again, right? Uh, virtual showings only, uh, the, the, the physical showing thing that seemed to happen last night um, e e either was a misunderstanding or what I think happened is that they, they announced it and got a lot of really um, severe pushback from, uh, from a lot of people and they, uh, they backed off a bit. So you're back in New York to, uh, to no showings. Let's talk a little bit though about what that means uh, on the Connecticut side because um, I I fear, um, you know, we're, we're, so we're finishing our second week, right? Our, our second week of, uh, of being through the looking glass. And I wanna make sure that, uh, that just because we have the right to do physical showings and that we, we, we have the opportunity to, uh, to engage in some business, that that, that that is different than you making smart, safe decisions, right? Um, I, I understand that uh, that many people need to make a living. I, I, I get that. Trust me, I, I am, I'm one of those people. I, I, like you, need to come to work every day to, to make money to live. Um, I just want to make sure that, that the, the right to have physical showings isn't confused with the, the, the obligation to have physical showings and the obligation for you to go out and, and, and be with people if you, if you choose not to. Um, so, so let's just remind each other that um, there are those of us who, uh, who are interested in, in going out and having some interaction with, with all those rules in place, and there are those of us who are not. Um, th th those of you in a high-risk category, again, just my personal opinion is that you should not. And be reminded that you have, you have, an, entire, uh, you have an entire organization behind you that is 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 more than willing to help uh, if 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 you need that help, right? So you need if someone wants to see something and you're not really comfortable doing that. There is someone who is comfortable, right? And and taking all those precautions. So let's just utilize each other and not forget that safety has to come first. Um, I think the I think the more I hear about uh, the more everyone's the more the more the the the, the, the smart people, the, the scientists are learning about um, how all of this continues to, uh, to, um, to uh, grow. Um, I, I think that we need to just double down on, on safety, right? Know that the market center has masks if you are heading out uh, for showings. Um, just contact your staff members, uh, contact your, your team leaders, contact um, uh, Robert or Maria, and let them know what you need, and we'll we'll find a way to to, to get that to you. Um, um, some someone can can a staff member can pop into the office to to uh, set that aside for you, um, <clears throat> and um, just know that we have those things like masks, gloves, and sanitizer still for your use. Um, so so be clear about about safety. Don't and don't don't. Don't feel like if your uh, if your sellers have said yes, uh, you know, we want showings that you have to show up for them. Uh, don't feel like there's a, there's an obligation for you to um, to risk your safety to uh, earn a dollar. I, I just I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again, and I don't mean to be repetitive. I just I want to I want to make the point that uh, I think we all need to continue to stay really smart. Uh, and what I mean by that is you, you, you can't do any kind of business. You can't sell a house. You can't connect with your database. You can't do any of that if you're ill, right? And so, so make smart choices and know, know full well that, uh, that 
there is no one person, regardless of, of age, strength, um, condition, or, or anything else um, that, that is immune. So make smart choices. Uh, again, masks, gloves, and, and sanitizer all still available from the Market Center for you and your clients if you should need them. Uh, please reach out and let us know how we can uh, put that in your hands. <clears throat> um, so one of the things, is Lori, is Lori on the call? Is Lori Egan on the call? Lori, if you're on the call, just unmute yourself and, uh, and let me know. I don't see your name. Um, Lori, let me know. She's been, uh, she's been pushing the MLS to, um, to make some changes in what they, how they um, report things. Uh, she, she was pushing for a, an actual days on market freeze across the board. Um, and the, you know, the MLS basically came back and said, you know, look, we are, we are not going to do a, a, a freeze across the board um, for a number of different reasons, most of which don't, don't really much matter, but they, 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 they're not going to do that. And so um, I have two thoughts. If you have sellers who are concerned about days on market, there is the withdrawn and temporarily off market, um, which, which does freeze your days on market. However, you, you then have to be off the market. Um, the, the, my other thought is this, and I think I said something like this in some session the other day. Um, I, I'm not sure anyone should be worrying about it. Uh, I, I think that uh, my personal opinion is that, is that people who worry about days on market are worrying about the wrong thing. If you're worried about days on market, you probably are not priced correctly, and so you should be looking at the price of the property instead of worrying about another week or two of days on market. Right? Because, it, because if you're worrying about days on market, what that says to me is that you're, you're concerned that a week or two or three or four or five weeks from now, your, your seller or buyers are going to look at you as stale inventory. And I would challenge you to look at it a little differently. I would challenge you to, to, to look at that and say, okay, well, if we're still on the market two or three or four weeks from now, clearly we've missed the mark with the price of the house, right? So I would, I would focus people on days on market from a pricing perspective, not from an actual days on market perspective, because I'm just, I'm not sure where that came from, um, that, that that's such a big to do where, we, where we're all canceling things and putting them up for, with fresh eyes. Uh, I, I frankly think that that's, a, uh, that's putting your head in the sand and not addressing the real problem, which is the, the price of the property. It probably doesn't surprise many of you that I think that, and yet I think if we get really objective about it, that's kind of what we're talking about, right? What questions do you have? We've had a whole nother day of people filing claims with the PPP and the SBA and the ABC and the one, two, three, and the, all that stuff. Um, we still don't have our, our Connecticut-based uh, federal unemployment assistance program yet, um, but I know many of you are pushing forward with the regular uh, program, uh, waiting for that conversion to happen. Um, I know some of you are, are struggling with buyers. I know some of you are struggling with sellers. <clears throat> while, while, you're, while you're coming up with your questions, uh, let me also just mention this. I've had a number of different um, uh, texts and, um, and, um, and emails today uh, stating, I have this person who refuses to sign the form. What do I do? Uh, I, I'm going to tell you that for those of you who are, or are not um, comfortable or used to putting your foot down, you're going to have to get used to that right now. Because the answer is if people are not willing to make a simple health disclosure and sign a piece of paper that says we're not going to, or we're not going to um, sue everybody if anybody gets sick, they, they shouldn't be in your seller's houses. And, and uh, my, my opinion about that in terms of your, how your sellers feel is that you get to have a conversation that says, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I, I get that you, you may be upset about that, that you're missing a, an important showing because they won't sign that. And yet we've decided to put the health of you and your family ahead of business. And, and, and we hope that you can understand that because the, 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 the answer is not, oh, okay, well, we'll just, we'll let this one go. We'll let this one slide. We'll let this person in. That's not the answer. Does that make sense to everybody? There's a reason for rules. Somebody else said to me today, I have a buyer who's really upset with me because she and her husband 
uh, are coming to see this house and they want to bring the mother and the father and the brother and the, uh, all these other people with them to see the house. No, that, that's, that's not part of the way the rules were written. And I'm sorry if people don't like the rules, we didn't write them, right? The government wrote them. And so, so I want you to be clear that the answer in that scenario well, is, is and was, um, sorry, only people who are actually purchasing the property are currently allowed to view it. While, we'll, while we are there, we, I'm more than happy to put your, your, your entire extended family on FaceTime and we can walk them through the house. And if you really need your father to come and visit the home before you purchase it, we can write a contract with a contingency that says, contingent upon my father coming and having a physical inspection once restrictions are lifted. Right? We've got to help people see a different path forward, not just pout and stomp their feet and hold their breath, and you get freaked out that they're not going to purchase because they're stomping their feet and holding their breath. We've, we've got to be clear about what our rules are and why they're in place. And, and, and frankly, guys, with, with just you on this, on this Zoom call, I'm going to say this, and, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. If sellers are upset with us, I'm okay with that. Because I look at my main job in all of this is to help you stay safe and secondarily help you figure out how to keep making money, right? We can't make decisions about money when, you're, when your safety and your health is concerned. Any hoodle, what can question do you have? Can I just make one comment about that? Of course. Um, anyone who has any upcoming closings, and you've probably already done this, but just a reminder, please check with your, um, the um, company or the bank who's doing the mortgage to make sure the product is still available for your client, that they have all the criteria, that they, that they meet all the criteria that they need, credit, income, you know, debt ratios. I mean, I'm seeing all of that that can squash a deal and you don't want to be surprised by it or you want to be able to shift gears if you have to and have the time. Every deal is important. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Karen. And, and so really important to, to be checking with everybody involved um, to make sure that everything is still on track, right? Hey, Karen, do you, have a, do you have a guest on today that you wanted to just introduce us to? I do. I want to introduce you to the newest member of the Westport Mortgage team, Nancy Morgan. Some of you have met her. She actually is a longtime personal and business friend of mine, and she joined us. There she is. Can you see her? Um, she joined us just like a week or so prior to the outbreak of the virus, so you haven't seen much of her, but you will be as soon as we are are done with this um, pandemic and Nancy just wants to say hi to you all so if you would welcome her. Nancy. Hi everybody, thanks Karen. Um, I am Nancy Morgan Robustelli and it's nice to meet you all. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to join Westport Mortgage as a loan originator. Um, I've been in the business for about 18 years. As a matter of fact, I started my mortgage career with Karen and Paul back in the day. Um, so it's really good to come full circle and to be back home again. Um, for over 11 years, I was with William Ravis Mortgage. I was a loan originator. I partnered with realtors in mostly the Stanford office and in Richfield. Um, and then most recently with JP Morgan Chase. Um, but I'm still passionate about working with buyers and sellers. And I think above all, I love working with agents so that's why i'm really happy to be back um i've been fortunate to have earned the trust and respect of many excellent realtors through the years so um uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be here um stanford is my home proudly uh, my kids went to schools here in stanford both graduated from yukon uh, Gerald works at Deloitte in Stanford, and uh, Colin is serving our country in the United States Coast Guard. And a few months ago, I was married to Rick Robustelli, and now that we're both working from home, um, we just hope it's not the shortest marriage in record, <laughs> basically. Um, 
<laughs> but uh, just to, you know, to wrap it up, I, I look forward to getting to know all of you, to know your business, um, and to earn your trust and respect in doing business together. And I hope everybody is healthy, safe, and sane, and the sun will come out again, and better days are ahead of us. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Love it. Thank you so much, and welcome, Nancy. We're so thrilled Thank to have you. you. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna send out her contact information to everyone so that you can even throughout all of this just say hi to her to keep her company a little bit. That sounds you perfect. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Love it. Love it. Love it. <clears throat> <laughs> and I'm I'm thrilled to hear that um, that you're you're newly married and that your husband's name is Rick because I just have this personal opinion that everyone should have a special Rick in their life. Mm -mm -mm. I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> so. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, we do have a, a few minutes for, uh, for any questions that you might have. <clears throat> I know there were some on the chat and they, they, they moved past me. So if you have a question, uh, just unmute yourself and let me know. <clears throat> Rick. How can help? Yes. Um, well, question for, for the whole group. Um, so I was one of the early people that filed unemployment and did it incorrectly and was curious if anyone had luck. I couldn't figure out a way to edit go in and like edit or cancel the form or anything. So I was wondering if anyone else had a chance to figure that out. Hmm. So if no one did, here's what I'll do, Mike. I'll, um, I'll work with, um, hey, hey, Kimberly, I think I saw that you were on the call. Would, would you mind if you and I went back into, uh, into your claim and, and played around and see if we can, we can find some, some buttons to push to, to, to edit or adjust? That way we're both looking at it to help Mike out. Yep, that's fine. That's awesome. Thank you so much. So, Mike, Thanks. we'll take a look at that and see if we can't help. And if not, okay. um, you know, again, if, if not, I'm, I'm sure it's not the end of the planet. It, 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 they just may have to have uh, some corrections once they get to your claim. Okay. What else? Rick, if the property is empty, do we still need that form? Uh, so if the property is vacant, this, the, the owner of the property gets to make that choice. So the owner of the property gets to decide, the owner of the property and you still need to sign the disclosure form. The, the owner of that property, if vacant, gets to make a decision as to whether or not the, they want uh, buyers and buyer's agents to sign that disclosure form as well as the health questionnaire. If they choose not to, they can just write on the bottom of their disclosure and consent form uh, that, they, uh, that they are declining to have um, buyers and buyer's agents um, sign, sign the form. Thank you. You're welcome. What else? So Rick, it's Kimberly, just a question. I know we've bounced back and forth on this. Um, commission checks and direct deposit, now that we're having to have commission checks be wired to the office, which is awesome. Um, I think now waiting for the mail to get to us may have a delay. Is there anything we could do to perhaps offer our agents the option of having direct deposit of those so great, great, great question. And again, we, we, as of last week, uh, you heard me say that we are working on direct deposit opportunities. Um, we, we, unfortunately, um, part of working on that direct deposit opportunity with the banks that we have uh, requires certain people to be inside the banks. And um, many of our banks don't have lobby hours any longer. And some of the people that we need to, to be uh, working on this uh, are, are either backed up because everybody else is gone or are, uh, are not around themselves. And so we, we, we are still working on it. We don't have, we don't have a, a, an answer for you yet. And the, the option you have available to you now is let your MCA know that you do not want your check mailed and it can be left at the office for you and you can come and pick it up. So, so that is absolutely an option. Um, you just need to let your, your MCA know that you do not want the uh, the checks mailed and we'll make that adjustment for you. But we are still working on some version of electronic um, depositing for each of you. We just don't have that worked out yet. Thank you. You're welcome. What else? Any other questions? No, that's it. All right. So I just want to end our, uh, our time together <clears throat> with a short video, uh, which uh, I think kind of sums up um, what, what our weekends should likely be looking like. So um, allow me if you would, uh, and let me, let me say ahead of time, um, I apologize.
And I apologize that I can't find my screen now either. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so who do I see on the call? Hey, Adonis. I see Adonis is on the call. He seems to have stepped away from the table. Oh, here he comes. He, he is. So Adonis, do me a favor. Uh, tell everyone a quick story while I figure this out. <laughs> okay. Go. Hmm. So there's this lady named Jen Bernanke, right? She's so awesome, right? She's she can do anything, technological wise. Got great stories. Um, so she once met this lady named Alice. I don't know. Let's just call her Alice Farina, for lack of a better name, right now. Um, and then. They lived happily ever after. I don't really know what to say. <laughs> I give it an A plus. Thank you. Wow, that's you guys are very kind. <laughs> I've heard way better stories. Okay, so we're 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 back, and thank God, because that was a terrible story. Whoever gave him an A plus is is kissing ass like big time for some reason. <laughs> that was a terrible, terrible story. Okay, so I am so sorry. <laughs> here is our here is our parting video. Guys, have a great weekend. Be safe. Be well. We'll see you on Monday. Spreading. This is no joke. It's no time to work or roam. The way you can fight it is simple, my friends. Just stay the at home. Now, technically, I'm not a doctor. But mother listen when I read a poem. So here I am, Sam and Jackson imploring you keep your ass at home if you want things to get back to normal don't panic just use your dome wash your hands stop touching your face and stay the f at home mother it's no time to gamble look around you're not at a casino just stay the f home as if your name was trenton quarantino Sure, you can still see your friends. Use the mother app on your phone. But unless you just ran out of groceries, please stay the at home. Thank you for doing your part to flatten the curve because that is steep. And now that you're home, please feel free to go the to sleep. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Samuel Jackson and I wish you the absolute best weekend possible. If you're, if you're hanging on for Ignite, we will start Ignite in six and a half minutes. Uh, I love you all. Take care.
All right, everybody, come on. Up, Rick. Everybody up, join me in jumping jacks. Join me in some sort of calisthenics. You gotta keep the energy up where we can just dance. Liz is like, what the heck is Dan doing up there? <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Bogdan. See, if I had music on, Dawn would get up and dance. I can oh, hum. I dance too. Don't tempt me, Rick, don't tempt me. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, let's dive in. I know it's five o'clock on a Friday. <clears throat> so, just by a quick show of hands, how many of you have felt like this has been the longest four-year, five-day week ever? Holy crap a doodles. <laughs> and so, here's what's fun, right? Here's what's fun. What's fun is we, we, we're, we're kind of finishing the end of week two, right? Um, we've, we've, we've survived, we're, we're writing business, we're, doing, we're touching our database, we're doing, we're doing what we're doing, right? Um, recognize that <clears throat> two weeks is, is kind of easy and you need to now prepare for another four weeks minimally. I hate to be the person who pees on everyone's parade, but my, my guess is that we're looking till the end of May. And so we're probably looking at another seven or eight weeks of some version of, of restriction. And so, so what's, what's kind of fun about that is you've got, you've got time to plan. You've got time to learn. You've got time to, to get so good at skills that maybe you, 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 you need to, to, to uh, work on, <clears throat> let's, let's take the time and really make sure that we come out on the other side, um, bigger, better, stronger, faster, right? So, so uh, one of the things I wanna make sure we touch on tonight is, you know, we talked a little bit about scripts last time, and we're gonna get to your ahas in a second. So um, do, do note your ahas, because I will look for probably three or four of them. Uh, we talked about scripts last time, and one thing we didn't talk about with scripts is, um, you know, in your 20% that we spoke about on Monday, number six in your 20% is practice, education, and role play, right? Well, with scripts, I mentioned that the, the, the way to, to really get good at them is to say them over and over again, to practice, 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 practice. And many of us learn new scripts or hear new scripts and think, oh, that would be awesome. And then either we don't practice them, which means when we're right in front of the, the, a client, we, we freeze because we haven't practiced those words, right? Or, I completely lost my train of thought. That's what happens at 5.04 on a Friday afternoon. So what was number one? Who was paying attention? We are recording this, so I couldn't actually go back and rewind and see, see what I said. Ah, so we either don't say them because they're not, that we haven't practiced them, or we do say them and we haven't practiced them, so that means we're practicing on our clients, right? Now, I don't know about you, but practicing on your clients, those, those, are, those are opportunities that could cost me 10 or 15 or 20 or $25,000. And so I'm not sure I wanna be practicing on live people, right? That's why doctors practice on dead people because they can't do those people any harm, right? So, so make sure that you're, you're setting up a schedule. We're gonna talk a little bit about schedule management today uh, because we, we uh, did not do that on Wednesday. Make sure that part of your schedule is practicing your scripts. Who do you do that with? Find somebody on this call and set up a time, right? You, you have more time now. I know it doesn't feel like you have more time, right? But you do have more time now than you did. So, so use, it, use it productively. If it were me, I, I would set up a, a, an 8.30 scripts session or an eight o'clock script session 15 or 20 minutes, that's all you need. 15 or 20 minutes, right? And so if, so if, if Dawn and I are going to be script partners at 8.15, I know, I know Dawn loves 8.15, so maybe we'll make it 7.15, Dawn. 
Um, if we're going to be script partners in the morning, that call looks something like this. Hey, how's it going? Uh, and bam, we're right into it. Right? Maybe we, we have a schedule for the week of what we're going to practice. Maybe this week is objection handlers. So we do a quick hello and Dawn says, will you do it for 4%? Or Dawn says, um, you know, will, will, you, um, will you be present for all showings? I don't want to sign. Will you, will, you, will you write a contract for four days, right? All, objection handling, right? And bam, I answer those objections and I go back with her. We go back and forth two or three times. Have a great day. Love you. Bye. Click. Right? It's not a time for, for socializing. It's a time to practice some scripts, get your brain and your mouth going, and then get to work. Right in, in the next couple of weeks, with more time available to you, what if you set up a practice partner in the morning and a different practice partner in the afternoon? Right, Begin and end your day, uh, like many of you have been beginning your day and ending your day with our 9 o'clock get going call and our 4.30 wrap up call. Well, what if, what if as part of that whole process, um, you're, you're bookending your day with, uh, with scripts? Understand that when you start to bookend your day, part of the reason that we're doing those 9 a.m. calls and 4.30 calls is, is to make sure that everybody's actually up and, and working by 9 o'clock, right? Even though you're home, get up, get dressed, and, and, and go to work. So, so uh, back, to, back to scripts, which is where I was going. Uh, figure out how to put together some kind of system uh, of script partners. Um, don't keep script partners for more than a couple of weeks. Because after a while, Dawn knows what I'm going to say, and I know what Dawn's going to say, and so we're, we're just, we're, we're not as good for each other anymore. So now I have to change, and I have to go to Moses. So now Moses and I are script partners for the next couple of weeks, right? Because, because now he's new. He's a, he's a new challenge and I, for, for me and, he, and, and I to him. Because we don't know each other all that well, and so we're just not, sure, we're not we don't have that comfort level. Right? And then three weeks later, now, now we know each other a whole lot better. And, and so now I moved to Kimberly, then I moved to Bogdan, right? And so, so I move through script partners every couple of weeks to keep it fresh and different and keep me on my toes. It's a great, great way to learn. I will tell you that when you do that, when those same objections come up or the same conversations come up in, at listing consultations or buyer consultations, you don't hesitate because now those scripts are reflexive. You don't have to think about what to say you just say it, right? So, sometimes, the, sometimes I'll answer a, a question with a script and I'll sit back and think to myself, oh my goodness, like, th th there, was, there was no thought about that. It, it, it's it, good, thing it, good thing it was the right thing to say, right? Because it was out of my mouth before I could stop it. That's called reflexive. So let's dive in and, and, uh, and talk about a couple of ahas from, uh, from Wednesday. Who's got an aha or two from Wednesday? I have one. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Silva. Um, is this what I'm going, uh, is this what I'm doing right now, uh, part of my 20? And then ask this question uh, yourself, uh, check uh, three times a day. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a nice check-in point, right? As I, and I said, put it on your phone, right? Because that way your phone can just ask you that question. You just get to answer it. <clears throat> there's, there's, um, I had a coach once who, uh, who talked about something called the one-minute protocol, which was a, a version of, uh, of the 15th protocol. And let me tell you what that is. So the, the 15th protocol is you, you have goals, right, that you, you, uh, you push towards every single month. And the 15th protocol says that, that on, on day one of that month, you have, you have these goals of written business, listings taken, you know, all, all those, uh, all those uh, metrics that you're looking to push towards, income earned. Um, and so the 15th protocol says that by the 15th of the month, you should be like 80% of the way through your entire month's goals. So that the second half of the month is either lighter or just as heavy and you're just, you're just overachieving or pushing towards next month's goals already, right? And it also gives you an opportunity that if for some reason something goes sideways on you in those, in those first two weeks, 
you, you still have two more weeks left, half the month to figure it out and, and make something different happen. Instead of what, what many people do is they, they play like the, the 30th protocol, right? Instead of the 15th, you, you look at your, 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 um, your calendar and say, okay, well, so my monthly goals are supposed to be done today. Well, if you do that at the end of the month, what opportunity do you have to actually to course correct and stay on track each month? So the 15th protocol says, pull it back and have everything be due earlier so that you still have an opportunity to either overachieve, take it easy, or use the second half of the month to, to accomplish what you maybe didn't accomplish in the first half of the month. In, in that same vein, the one minute protocol, now, now trust me when I, when I say I understand how, how insane this kind of sounds, but the one minute protocol is boiling that down to, okay, what am I doing this, this minute? What am I doing next minute? Am I, am I focusing my day minute by minute, hour by hour on dollar productive activities? Did, did you ever spend an entire day at work and, and kind of get home and plop down and say, God, I was so busy all day. And then you really start to think about it and think, hey, what did I actually do? Like, what, 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 did I, what did I accomplish today? Remember, busyness and business, even though they're spelled the same way, are, are, are two different things, right? The I and the Y in the middle make, make all the difference. Busyness and business are, are two different things. Great aha, Silva, thanks. What else? We're so focused on the nows that we don't think about the laters. Ah, yes, Fiona. Foc See, we're so focused on the nows that we forget about the, 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 the new business, right? And so, and so the aha there is client acquisition comes first. Client acquisition is your top priority every single day you work. I, I, would, I would offer to you that if you don't spend time on client acquisition in a day, Regardless of what else you do, you didn't really get up and go to work. Some of you aren't going to like to hear that, right? Because your thought is, well, what work when you're a real estate agent is, you know, I went on a listing appointment and I spent, you know, four hours shuffling a, a buyer around. The work part of your day is client acquisition. If you're, if you're, if you're looking, working on, on business growth, and consistency, right? Business growth and consistency says client acquisition is a number one each and every time, each and every day. Great aha, what else? Hey Rick. Hey Kim. So we are working really hard to have a two hour block. We're building our habit for lead gen with no distractions and it's the perfect time to create that habit and it's something that we've both really struggled with and so that is our absolute determination to make that our habit every day and it's been great love that and so when you say distraction free are are, are you locking the children out of the house is that part of how you're doing that kicking and screaming <laughs> luckily we have a door to our upstairs on school and we do it 10 to 12 and the phones are silenced and and there's no emergencies right so we're really really getting intentional and and really supporting each other in that it's been uh, really awesome that's a beautiful thing i love that and you know here's the thing with with four boys all you have to do is keep the refrigerator stocked and you won't hear from them true. that's absolutely 100%. true <laughs> <laughs> Throw food at them. so so let's do this if, let, let's put a pause on this if, it, if it's okay with you i want to i want to dive into a little schedule management um, while we're on this topic, because a couple of you put it on the on the uh, table, so let's dive into that topic a little bit and outline for you, because I think there's there's two things to look at right now. There's there's the there's the the calendar of of a real estate professional, like what is what is a the perfect week of a real estate professional actually look like, and then there's how are we making those adjustments today and for the next four, six, eight weeks. Uh, while, while our circumstances are slightly altered, how are, we, how are we making those adjustments? Would that be okay if we just spent a, a few minutes on that? Okay, great. So let me, so full disclosure now, full disclosure, art was not one of my strong suits. And yet what we're going to do is draw a little bit of a, of a calendar for you. 
So hopefully, somebody just tell me, because uh, I, I turned my cameras off. Uh, somebody just tell me that you can see the whiteboard and what I'm drawing. It's perfect. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Silva. Right, so here's, so here's our makeshift calendar, right? And so what Kim just said is, uh, ultimately, she's, she's diving in and, and time blocking that client acquisition uh, period for two hours a day. Now, generally speaking, what part of the day do we look to have client acquisition show up in? 9.30 to 11.30. Right, so, so the morning, right? The morning, and, and why the morning? Because of the energy levels. Right, so a couple of reasons why the morning, right? Your energy's higher in the morning. Why else? Do your most important task first. Right, so it's that eating the frog concept, right? So when you, when you eat the frog, for those of you who don't know, what that, uh, don't know what that means, it means do the thing that you maybe don't want to, um, to do, which for some of us, whoops, I don't know where that came from, uh, which for some of us is, is lead generation, is that client acquisition. So get that done first, so that it's done, you're not carrying it around all day. Why else? Why else in the morning? Best time to get a hold of people. Right, so, so for, for many people in your database, you're, you're getting them at home. And here's the fun part about it. Um, you don't have to do it in the morning every single day. As a matter of fact, I don't recommend it. I recommend mornings most days for all the other reasons that we're talking about. And then have, have an evening, have an evening, uh, maybe Thursday evenings is your evening client acquisition opportunity or, or Saturday mornings or something like that, because you won't find everybody at home all the time in the morning, right? A lot of people in our, in our uh, databases work. And so we want to make sure that we're also, uh, we're also giving, giving them an opportunity to, uh, or giving you an opportunity to reach them at home as well for a conversation, uh, perhaps in the evening or on a, or on a weekend day. Any other reasons you can think of why the morning makes the best sense? May I share a thought? Yes, Silva. Yes, if you let all the minutia uh, starts in the morning, uh, then uh, and you start dealing with it, then um, you let the day run you instead of you running your day, and then the day is over, and then there is no lead generation. Yeah, so so true, right? Because all, all of those emergencies, right? All of those real estate emergencies uh, start to creep in, and it's not just real estate emergencies. It's, it's, it's personal side emergencies. It's all the stuff that the, every hour we're up, more stuff comes our way, right? That's just, that's just called being alive, right? Running a household, running a business. And so, so when you can get that most important client acquisition piece done earlier and put a check in that box, the, let the rest of your day, because then hi, Chris, um, the, let, the rest, let the rest of your day, um, it's pretty scary, isn't it? I can see everything that goes on in everyone's home. It's a little weird. Um, how's that coffee, Kimberly? <laughs> so, um, so, so recognize that there, there is a reason for the morning, right? There's actually multiple reasons for the morning, and we encourage you to, uh, to find that time <laughs> in the morning. It doesn't matter ultimately what time that is, but make it, make it the first thing that you do. And so, so I'm going to just kind of put this block this put across. Ahead. Whoops. And so if you're not muted, if you could mute yourself, that would be spectacular. I don't really want to because I want to be able to focus. I would just hang up and just bang up shopping. This yeah. is good. Hold on. Sorry. I'm, I'm taking care of it. All righty. Thank you. So this whole piece here, right, that's kind of what I call the morning routine routine that says morning routine i know it doesn't look like morning routine but that says morning routine what i just wrote there right and that's that's what time do you get up what time do you, do you, you get up you exercise you 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 do your yoga you do your whatever you're going to do go for a run uh go to the gym 
uh, shower, get ready, get dressed for work, uh, and, and get yourself into that spot. Uh, I would also include in that morning routine, uh, for me, it's opening the computer, checking the phone, and seeing what the, uh, what the, any messages that came overnight, and checking the computer. I do check my email before I start my day. I know there are some, some people, some coaches who, who uh, think that's a really bad idea. Uh, I, I'm not one of them, because I know that if I don't check that and, and handle that in my head, that I'll be thinking about it all morning long, right? So I, I would go ahead and, and get through all of that. Now that doesn't mean get sucked into it so that by 1130 you're still answering emails. It means open it up, see if there's anything that's a priority, get, get those quick uh, priorities done. And sometimes the priorities, sometimes the priorities can be handled, oh goodness, uh, sometimes the priorities can be handled by simply sending a quick text or an email back saying, hey, Donna, thanks so much. I see that you need my attention. I will get back to you before noon today. Boom, right? So, so now Donna knows that her issue was handled or was, was seen and is being addressed, even though I'm not handling it right now, right? So there's a version of customer service that I want you to, 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 to embrace that, that is a version of customer service that keeps your clients and the people around you informed that doesn't mean you have, to, you have to solve all those issues right now. Does that make sense to everybody? Right, it's, it's not about right now, it's about communicating perhaps right now. And when you, when you really start to, to have a schedule that makes sense in your business, what you'll start doing is you'll start, you'll start training everybody, right? You'll start training your clients when to call you. One of the things I used to say to all of my sellers was, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, please note that if you need me, Please, and the hours between the hours of nine and eleven, I'm actually lead generating for buyers for your home, so I am unavailable during that time. If you need me, and it's between nine and eleven Monday through Friday, please leave me a message or send me a text, send me an email. You know, all these different ways, and I will get back to you before one o'clock. But just start to train people. That's not a time that you're reachable, right? So, some of you suffer from real estate agent disease. And what I mean by that is you say things out loud to people like, you know, the reason you should hire me is because I'm available all day long, every single day. Just let me know, right? It doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm at my kid's soccer game, I, if it's Christmas or Easter or Hanukkah or Passover, or doesn't matter. I'll stop whatever I'm doing. My family is far less important to me than you. Right now, now many of you don't say all of those words, and yet that's that's kind of the stage you set. And then what's funny about that is that you have the nerve to be irritated when somebody calls you late at night or early in the morning, or expects your your attention immediately when when that's the that's the table you've set, right? So instead, start to, you know, Diana teaches us that uh, you grow into the convert people grow into the conversations that you have around them, right? And so what conversations are you having around the people around you? What conversations are you having with your, uh, with your buyers and sellers? Are you, are you training them to understand your availability, to train the hours that you are available to assist them with and giving them parameters in which to work? My voicemail, when I was still listening and selling real estate, my voicemail used to say, um, hi, this is Rick. If you're reaching me uh, after uh, seven o'clock. If you're reaching me after seven o'clock at night, that, that was my time. After seven o'clock at night, please note that I will respond to you after nine thirty on the next business day. So, so if people were calling late, they just knew not to expect me, right? And then if if I if I heard that if 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 Caroline was calling me and and I chose to listen to that message and it was it seemed like an emergency. I could choose if I wanted to at eight o'clock at night to call to call her back, but but now what I've done is I've I've uh, I've underpromised and overdelivered, and some of you set yourselves up for for the overpromise underdeliver version of that, because in order to win business or because because you think that the job is to is to make people happy, which by the way is not the job. That's not the job description of a real estate agent to make people happy, right? Oh, did I give you your job description yet? Oh man, okay. So Donna, your job when I'm finished with the schedule thing is to remind me to give people their job description because that's an important piece. 
do, do you see what I'm, do you see where I'm going here? Train people so that you, you, get, you get to utilize the time that you need to run and grow a business without constantly being pulled away, right? One of the things that I've had to do with, with all of you, again, I'm, I'm, I'm the broker of almost 500 real estate agents, and here's what I've learned. When things go sideways, people need access, right? And so, so the last two weeks of my life with all of you, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored and privileged to, to, to be able to do it, I've had to come up though with a system because the, the, the onslaught of, of, of you needing my attention for certain things has, has really gone through the roof. And so what I've done is I, I've now scheduled my afternoons and pieces of my mornings in 10 minute blocks. For, for those of you who have texted or, or emailed or, or called and said, you know, I, I need to talk to you, what you've received back from me typically is I can speak to you at 310. I can speak to you at 3.20. I can speak to you at 3.30, 3.40, right? Because I, 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 st I just start making lists, right? Moses needs me, so he's 3 o'clock. And Caroline needs me, she's 3.10. Donna's 3.20. Chris is 3.30, right? And, and, and in those 10-minute blocks, I go bam, 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 and I get all of that taken care of. But that, that, that requires a schedule, right? It requires a schedule both for you to know, okay, he's not ignoring me. He, he, he got my need and he's going to call back at X time. And it also, it, it's, also uh, it's also for me to be able to, to actually get other things done other than just be on the phone all day long, right? It also, just by the way, it also sets, it sets a clear expectation that, that we, have, we have 10 minutes together, so let's, let's make sure that we're focused to get, solve this problem and then, uh, and, and then, and then be done, right? Does that help as an example? All right, let's go back to our calendar. I kind of like sitting on the desk, it's fun. When did you want to do the job description? Right, right when we're done with the calendar. So just another few minutes. Let me just turn off my camera so no one's staring at my belly button, okay. So this whole piece in here, that's that morning routine that you have, right? Maybe your morning routine on the weekends is different, but the morning routine and that, and so right here at this point in time, right, each day, that's kind of the start of your business day. And so whatever that time is for you, right, for some of you it's 7 or 7.30, for some of you it's 8 or 8.30, for some of you it's 9. Uh, I, I, would, I would offer that as business owners, starting your day at 11.30, it doesn't work so well, right? You, you've, you've kind of missed half the day. So have that, have that understanding about, about building your calendar. And so now you're in the office and from nine to 11, the first thing you're gonna do, because remember, you've already done the, I checked, I checked my emails and I checked my phone and I checked for, for quote unquote emergencies. And so now this time period here with the, oops, this time period here with the, um, where's my eraser, there we go with the um, X in it, that's your lead generation time. Now remember, we said that maybe on Thursdays, you're going to do something more in the evening, like from five to seven. So maybe that's your, your lead generation time on Thursdays, and you're gonna fill that Thursday morning with something different. And then twice a week, I want you to, uh, I want you to make sure that you have time scheduled to work on your business, not in your business, right? Client acquisition is working in your business. The rest of your days are going to be filled with appointments, right? All the rest of this time in these days, that's appointment time, right? It's when you're setting your, your, your buyer appointments. It's when you're setting your listing appointments. And it's okay for that afternoon to be a little bit more chaotic. Right, because you're 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 squeezing as much as you can into each of those days. As long as you get those mornings solid in, you, you'll be okay. And yet, there are two opportunities for you during the week. And so maybe for you, it's it's Tuesday afternoons and Thursday mornings, because Thursday mornings you're going to have a slightly different um, a slightly different time period. And so Thursday mornings from ten to eleven, and uh, Thursday a uh, Tuesday is from three to four you're going to work on your business. Oops, on your business.
What do I mean by working on your business? Work on command. So it could be working on command, right? It could be working on special projects. It could be, it could be um, you taking the time to, maybe that's when you're going to do some, some script work and role playing, right? Maybe that's when you're going to, uh, you know, Moses and I are twice a week are going to just run our listing consultations with each other. Maybe that's that hour and we're doing it on Zoom or we're doing it on the phone or we're in the office together, right? Once, once we're actually back in the office together. And so, so working on special projects, working on, you know, when we start next week and we start to go through our seller unit, th there's going to be conversations that we have around you building tools. If you don't have tools, how, when are you going to build them? And by tools, I mean, do you have a listing uh, consultation that's, that's built? Do you have a pre-listing package that you deliver ahead of time, right? If, if you don't have those kinds of tools, you need to build some of those tools. Right? We have foundational pieces that we, that we hand to you that you then can customize, but you have to take the time to go and customize it and go and, go and build the tools that you're going to use to win business. Right? And so, so you might need some of that time to do all of that. Just have that time that's not, that's not, I'm always out with buyers, I'm always in sellers' houses. There's time in your business that you need to just kind of step away and work on the business instead of actually in it. Does that make sense? Good. Now, yes, there are things that I skipped from a schedule management perspective, simply because from a time perspective, and that is, you know, from a, from a, a month or a year long perspective, schedule your personal time first, schedule what the vacations, you know, the, the, there will be a time again where you can get on a plane, I promise you, right? And so, so look ahead to that time and, and decide, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I think we're all going away in July, right? Every single one of us, we're just gonna close the office down, again and then go go on vacation maybe all together to an island right and so the the idea of of when are you traveling when are you working maybe there's maybe there are times in your day right where where at three o'clock you have to be home to get the kids off the bus and that's just real in your world right and so you, you schedule that in so that so that you can push things all around but we had a, a, a buyer's agent for uh for many years who was that person who was a three o'clock hard stop to be home for the kids on the bus and and for, for from three to maybe five or six o'clock they were there for the for the children and then and then the other spouse got home and then they went back to work if need be with uh, with buyers right but when you have that schedule and you stick to it it's it's like plan your work and then work your plan right if you don't plan your work it, Right? Have you ever heard the phrase, if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist, right? It's why I said the other day that, that I think I used Silva as an example for this. If I asked Silva to show me her calendar for the last three months, I could probably tell her just about how much money she's making in real estate. Because if the important things, if that client acquisition piece is not showing up in her calendar, it means it's also likely not showing up in her life, in her business because we calendar the, the important things. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, I did say I would spend just a minute or two on, on, on calendars, for, calendars for quarantine, right? It's a whole new topic to talk about. Calendars for quarantine. And so recognize that uh, one of the things that I, I highly encourage you to do is uh, like get out of your pajamas, right? W wake up, exercise, shower, do your hair, use, use product. A couple of days this week, I went product free and I thought, oh, you know, it looks like, I'm, looks like I just rolled out of bed, All right? So use some, use some product and be ready for work. Be ready for work. I was on a Zoom call at, at 7.30 um, with our ALCs uh, one day last week. And uh, it was the one Zoom call that I have done from home because as, as most of you have seen, I've, I've done most of our uh, of our trainings and our meetings that I've, that I've run um, from here. I'm lucky enough to live four minutes away from the office and we really have more of a studio set up here. And so, uh, so I've gotten to do my, my Today Show studio work uh, right from here. Uh, and yet I did this one at home and someone said, you wear a jacket at home? And I said, well, when I'm working, I do. 
right? And that 7.30 Zoom call, I was, I was working. I, I, was, I was talking to our leadership team. I, I, was, I, I was a half hour conversation that was an important conversation to have. And, and to me, this, this jacket is part of that routine. Right. And so so recognize that when your routine goes out the window, you need to grasp to as much as possible that, that creates that routine for you and getting up and exercising. And if I've lost some of you right there, you know, the, not the get up part, I mean, the exercise part. Right. This is a perfect opportunity for you to start some version of an exercise regimen. Trust me when I tell you the days, the days that I don't run. I typically run two or three times during the, the weekdays, and that's usually a four to five mile run. And then I run uh, two days on the weekends, and that's usually a six or seven mile run. And so the days I don't do that, by this time of day, I have far less energy, far less energy, right? Like I knew I had to be with you guys starting at five o'clock today after a long day of, of, of all the other stuff. There was no way I couldn't, I, I couldn't get up and not, and, and, and not run this morning or I, I, I'd be asleep now, right? So recognize, recognize that this is a great time for you to start working in some kind of a fitness a regimen. Like it, if you don't wanna get up and run, then get up and bike. If you don't wanna get up and bike, get up and walk around the block, right? You can still do that. So just take a walk, right? Lift weights, do yoga, do whatever it is that, that, that sings to you, some version of physical activity. It will just, it will just set you up for a better day uh, every day. So work on that and, and have that have that built into your calendar. Uh, <clears throat> try and create that routine. If you're home and you, and you have kids at home or if there are people who are in the house that aren't normally in the house, right? Find find someplace quiet, right? Like Kim and Mike said before that they have a they they have I think she's like Kim said they have six padlocks on that office door. Isn't that what you said, Kim? Six padlocks to keep the children out. Um, so so find a, find a quiet spot and make that your spot while you're still working at home, right? And then keep that calendar full with the things that you need to do, right? That client acquisition right now for us is all about touching your database. It's all about having those care conversations. I know we've said that 17 times this week, right? But I will tell you, it is so massively important for you to be having those conversations right now. By the way, how, how are you doing on your homework? You're 48 hours in, right? And if you started at zero, you need to be at, at, at least like 15 or so percent 48 hours later, because many of you won't do it over the weekend. And that leaves only Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday for you to, for you to kind of get that done. So the 15th protocol says that you should be at, at least at 15 or 20% um, by today. Right? If you're not there, you're probably a little bit behind and it puts you behind the eight ball to hit that 30% number in your MET database by Wednesday, right? And so the, again, the homework, the 30% is due on Wednesday, Wednesday, um, Wednesday when we start. And if you think I won't ask about it, you have said, you have clearly not ever taken class with me before. Right, so, so we're gonna have that conversation. I wanna know where you're at, what, you're, what you've experienced, what your numbers look like, right? <clears throat> Again, we're, we're building towards the, towards the pop at the end. And if you don't lean in, uh, you'll, you'll end up getting, getting kicked out. I don't mean of class, I mean being kicked out of, of income um, in, your, in your businesses. If you have other responsibilities while you're at home, right? I know some of you are homeschooling children that you, you never had to do before, right? Or making sure that the kids are on, on online school and things like that. Work that into your calendar, right? We're, we're going to set up a, a schedule next week or a class next week that really kind of works you, walks you through uh, all of the, all of the uh, things you need to be worried about or dealing with or uh, on top of is what, how I should say that when you're working at home. Uh, so watch for that early next week <clears throat> in another session. Uh, but for today, in terms of scheduling, I want you to be clear that client acquisition is still the first, in, uh, the first thing you need to be dealing with every single day. The second thing you need to be dealing with from a business perspective is keeping your current transactions together, right? Keeping current transactions together has never been more important. And so make sure that even if that's every day or every other day, calling every one of the players in that pending transaction just to check in. 
right? You heard Karen say before on the uh, on the 430 call that that she recommends right now that you're you're talking with your buyers and listing agents, you're talking with the agent on the other side of the transaction to make sure that the buyers are communicating with their loan uh, with their lenders to make sure that the program that someone said yes to them uh, on three or four weeks ago is even still a program, right? Or maybe you have to make a quick switch. Maybe, maybe, maybe things have gone sideways. Maybe there's new requirements. Things keep changing every single day. We need to be on top of those things, making sure that we're, we're communicating. So, so step number one in terms of your, your business schedule right now is, uh, is client acquisition, which is those care calls. Uh, to your database and step number two keeping transactions together all right so um any other questions on schedule management i would add one more thing which yes. is um it's it's as important that you look at your weekly schedule and have a rhythm in your week as it is your daily schedule so if you have your lead generation at a specific time every day, perhaps in your week you have days that are dedicated to expireds, days that are dedicated to sphere, days that are dedicated to public open house uh, activities, and you keep that rhythm going. And then you have, have specific days for specific projects and, and keep that in front of your eyes and, and build it into your week when you plan your week um, whether that's Friday afternoon or Saturday morning or Sunday morning, um, but it's a, it's a true plan that's done at a specific time during the week. Yeah, I love that. Right. So, so what Debbie's talking about is um, working on your daily, but then working on your uh, working on your your weekly as well. Right. So making sure that you're looking at, at week at a glance type thing and and structure your week. So that, so that each day, and, and part of the reason that, that Debbie says that uh, is, is knowing, knowing, knowing how she keeps her schedule, if, if every single day was the same, and, and Debbie, correct me if I'm wrong, if every single day was the same, like she'd want to blow her brains out, right? And so, so, so her week at a glance schedule is to keep things different and to keep the, keep the variety in there, as well as to make sure she's touching all the different um, sources of business, which we're also supposed to cover tonight. I still haven't quite gotten into the one and a half hour mode of Ignite instead of the three hour mode of Ignite. So, so we'll, we'll get there or we won't. Monday's another day, right? Um, but but just that's, a, that's another great point, right? So build your days and then and be mindful of how those days are built and then look at each day in the week as an entire week and start to underscore, I'm gonna focus on this on Monday, I'm gonna focus on this on Tuesday. And here's the other thing, it, it does not have to be the same each week, right? You're gonna build your week on Sunday night or so. So maybe next week because you had, you had great Remember the days when we used to have open houses on the weekends? Remember those days? <clears throat> so when those show up again, right, and you've had these awesome open houses all weekend, well, maybe that weekend, Monday for you, is going to be a massive open house follow-up day. And then, and then another weekend, you, 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 you really were, weren't uh, all, that, um, all that successful with, with garnering new, um, uh, new clients at, at open houses. And so you make that switch up to say, you know what, tomorrow I only have two calls to make to open house people, so I'm going to do heavy up on, on database this week um, and, and push the open house um, follow-up to later in the week or, or not that week. It, it, so my point is it can, be, it can be fluid, right? You can change that week to week uh, if that makes sense to you. So let me give you the, the, um, the definition of your, of your job description because I realized I didn't give that to you. So you know what, write this down. I'll say it a couple of times. So the definition of what you do for a living, a lot of people think that what we do for a living is sell houses, you know, do marketing consultants, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're top tier negotiators, we're, um, we put buyers and sellers together, um, we're, we're people people, we help people with the American dream. I mean, there's a whole lot of ways to like, you, know, you could write a jingle about it and, and, and make a commercial if you'd like. However, Here's, here's really the job description of a real estate professional. <clears throat> to interpret current conditions, 
to interpret current conditions such that the client can make the best business decision possible. To interpret current conditions such that the client can make the best business decision possible. That's what you do for a living. And when you think about it, all those other things that I threw out there, the, 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 the bumper sticker versions of what we do for a living, right? they kind of fit into that description. They kind of fit into that, that job description. Do we put buyers and sellers together? Well, sure we do. And the way we do that is that we work with our clients and help them interpret current conditions, whether that's the current market conditions or the current conditions of an offer that we're negotiating with them or for them, or, or anything else, the current conditions of their property and how best to get it ready for the market, right? We help them interpret current conditions so that they can make the best business decision possible. And I think the, the, the important piece to underscore there is who's making the decision? They are, right? They're making the decision every single time every single time. I think that the, the thing that drives people the craziest is when they call me and say, I need your advice on what advice to give to my clients. And, and typically my answer to that is, well, my first piece of advice is don't give advice to your clients. Instead, educate your clients point out the options that are available to your clients, help them interpret the current conditions, help them interpret what it is that, that's going on, and then ask them a question, right? So I'm curious, Debbie, based on all that information, based on those three different options, those three different ways to go, which do you think benefits you the most? Which path would you like to go down? How would you like me to, to, to respond to that? What, what's the next action that we'll take together? See how that's a little bit different, right? So you're, you're helping them interpret and then you're asking them the question. Some of you have to get better at asking more questions, right? Regardless of, what, of what's out there, you have to get better at asking more questions. Remember what Jeff Glover told us, questions keep you what? A couple of things, they keep you focused, right? They also keep you in control and, and a, a question pushes the focus on the client, right? When you're asking a question, it's not about you. Yes? When you're asking a question, it's about the person you're asking the question of. You're, ceding, you're seemingly ceding control to that person, right? Trust me, one thing I have learned over time, the person who talks the most walks away thinking that the meeting or the conversation or the, or the whatever, the listing appointment went the best. So think about that. If you're at a listing appointment doing your consultation, which is different than your presentation, right? When we start next week, we're, we're, not, going, we're not going to give you a listing presentation, right? You will never hear me say those words as it relates to what we do with sellers. We have listing consultations because as consultants, we help people interpret current conditions such that they can make the best business decision possible. You see how all that works together, right? And so, and so uh, excuse me one second, there we go. Um, so, so recognize that there is a, um, that there is a, 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 a through line where the person who speaks the most ends up feeling like it went the best. If that's you in a listing scenario where you spoke the most, so you went left thinking, ooh, that went great. By default, that means the person on the other side, you know, the person who was actually going to hire you, didn't think it went the best. You see how that works? I'll tell you, when I learned that, that changed the way I listed in a heartbeat. Because as you'll hear me say next week, but before I merged my business with Debbie's, 
uh, and I was a solo agent, my listing appointments were on average two and a half to three hours long. Because nobody told me that's not what I was supposed to do. And I thought the best way to, to help people understand all the fabulous, wonderful things I could do for them was to tell them every single one of them at length. I came with this big marketing advertising book and I put it on the table and we started turning those pages. And to this day, I think I took a lot of listings back then because at some point they looked at each other and, and silently thought, you know what, maybe if we just sign his paperwork, he'll leave. Because I think they thought I was never going to leave their home. Right? Those are back in the days when I was still going to their house, right? And so you change all that up, you bring people to the office, you get script work in your life, you, you learn things about talking less and asking more so that the other person is the one who's, who's delivering so much of the information. And then all of a sudden, they feel like it was all about them. And, and guess what? what? What's most people's favorite topic? Themselves themselves. And so when you ask a bunch of great questions and they get to talk about themselves, you leave there and they're like, she was awesome. I think I'm in love. I think I might want to get rid of you and go with her, right? The next time she comes back, I am putting a ring on it. And they don't even know why. And it's because you've, you've designed this conversation where you're the one asking those questions and they get to feel like it's all about them. All right, so we're down uh, like seven different bunny trails all at once. And yet, I wanted to make sure that you got that, um, that important piece of information. Hey, that looked like Max Ernie walking behind you, Caroline. Tell him to walk back and wave. <laughs> so, uh, so recognize, there he is. Hi, Max. <clears throat> so uh, recognize that... Um, that that job description, I want you to like, I want you to write that down. I want you to, to tattoo it on the back of your hands, stitch it in a pillow, do whatever, make a t-shirt out of it. Do whatever you have to do to keep that in front of you. Because if you will use that, uh, that job description and recognize that they get to make the decisions and we get to present the options, it will save you so much time, effort, energy, and angst. Right? I find that a lot of people get, get angst in their, in, their, in their business or experience angst in their business because they think their job is to make people happy. In that job description that I just gave you, does it say, oh, and everyone has to be happy? Let me ask you this. In our, in our buyer agreements and our listing agreements, does it say in any one of those documents that everyone has to be happy all the time? It doesn't. And yet so many of us make the mistake and think that the job is to keep people happy. Sometimes in business, things happen or need to be said that don't, that don't keep people in that happy place, right? If I had something wrong with me and I just couldn't figure it out and I went to the doctor and the doctor, instead of just telling me like it was objectively, decided that, that, that his job was to tell me things that made me happy, how, how would that work out for me, right? I mean, depending on what the diagnosis was, that could work out really poorly because I could, I could leave there feeling happy and be dead in two weeks because nobody told me the truth, right? Because nobody was objective with me and direct and clear with me. Nobody helped me interpret my current condition so that I knew what the options were so I could make the best decision possible. Do you see how that's a very different path forward than, than what oftentimes gets in our heads? Somebody talk about that. Talk to me about that, that business definition. How, how do you, what do you, what does that sound like to you? How can you use that in your business? Let's have a little discussion around that. Go ahead, Moses. Well, what happens is um, I've, Dealt current, uh, recently with a client of mine, and I thought I understood exactly what he wanted, and and I went ahead and this is uh, the four new um, rental um, rental uh, listings, and I totally missed what he 
wanted, meaning he was only looking for Section 8 tenants. And I was trying to explain it to him. Look, if you go ahead that route, your pool of tenants are going to be very, very small. Right. What you want to do is you want to open it up so you can uh, get the best tenants. And at that time, he agreed and everything was okay. I went back after I um, listed in MLS. He was totally opposite, saying that he wanted Section 8 only. So I was having a little difficult time. I said, okay, fine. If this is the way you want, I'll go ahead and find somebody who is going to be Section 8. And I'll work well with you based on that criteria. So right now, I've been getting a lot of inquiries. And he has come up with some things that he wants even before having those tenants go in and take a look at the pro property. And it's just made it very difficult for himself. Sure. And so so and I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you again just because there's some noise coming from, from your background. But the 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 idea of uh, the idea of uh, first and foremost with, with, with the outline that uh, Moses just put on the table, let's be really clear and cautious around how we deal with our landlords, right? Because Landlords, uh, landlords need to follow fair housing law, right? And so when we hit our buyer unit, probably not next week, but the following week, we're going to go through that fair housing law because some of the some of the conversation that you and I were just having uh, concerns me a little bit because the, that landlord that landlord doesn't have a right to necessarily turn away or deny people who are yes or no with section eight, right? And so, and again, I, I, I don't know all the background. And so we, you and I can talk about it offline, but recognize that in a scenario like that, your, 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 the role is to present the options and just, and figure out what the, what the client is looking for, right? And then follow that lawful instruction. We'll go down this path. Remember you're following lawful instruction. So if they're giving you, if you, they're giving you instruction that may not, that may not, um, jive with fair housing, well, th then we're not following that. Then we're having a different discussion. And if, if uh, tenants, I have to have this conversation uh, later tonight when we finish our, our class in that it, my recommendation to one of our agents is that she's going to need to back away from, from, from a listing, right? There's a scenario where a landlord is making some decisions uh, based on the current uh, scenario and environment uh, that we have going on that that I think are probably going to allow us to say, you know what, thank you. If you're going to make those decisions, we can't represent you any, any longer, right? Fly be free. What else about that, uh, about that, um, about that conversation uh, did you want to talk about? Any thoughts around that, uh, that version of using that job description almost like a business plan? Has anyone done it? Have, have, have you had different, uh, different results based on using that versus keeping everyone happy or, or other things? I have, I have changed uh, tremendously in the way I talk to my clients um, and I'm constantly focusing on improving. And um, surprisingly enough, every time I apply this principle, I actually receive one thank you on the other side and it seems like I've solved the problem. So, yeah. yay. <laughs> yeah, the, the way you solve problems is by not solving problems, right? And I'll tell you what, if you're a fixer, like I tend to be a fixer, right? Because I don't have a whole lot of patience. And so, so when something comes up, I'd rather just fix it and then move on. And when you're a fixer, this, this, this whole strategy of let's have a discussion around what the options are, what, your, what, what are your thoughts about it, and, and turning the tables and having, having the client make the decision on each step of the way. If you're a fixer, that's tough for you, right? It's tough for you because you just want to, A, you want to move it fast, and B, you're a fixer, so you think you know the best answer, right? Here's my thought. Uh, stop showing people that you're the smartest person in the room. Stop, stop doing that, right? Some of you like to ride in on your white horse to save the day, right? Leave the white horse at home. Instead, bring confidence and skill as a consultant 
and, and ask more questions to understand exactly what it is, right? One of the, one of the, one of the tenets of the Y4C2Ts, right? Is seek first to understand, right? So are you seeking first to understand? Are you, are you asking some questions to really understand at a deeper level what it is they're looking for? Do, do you know the story of, of uh, little Tommy? Let me tell you the quick story of little Tommy, right? So, uh, so little Tommy, who's nine years old, gets off the bus and comes running in uh, and his mother's, and his mother's uh, doing the dishes and says, mommy, 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 where do I come from? And his mother's like in the middle of, of doing dishes and thinks, oh, God, really? Okay, first of all, I didn't think I was going to have to have this conversation at nine o'clock uh, when, when he was nine years old. Second of all, I kind of thought his father would have this conversation with him and, and he's on a business trip. So, okay, let, I guess we're just doing this. And so she puts stuff down, has little Tommy sit at the, uh, sit at the kitchen table and explains exactly where little Tommy came from, right? in graphic detail. And for those of you who aren't quite catching on the story, I'm talking about the birds and the bees, just, just to be clear, right? And so she finishes the story and little Tommy is sitting there, not quite knowing what to say or do. And his uh, mother says, so, you know, Tommy, I, I'm, I'm curious, what made you come home today and ask that question? And Tommy says, well, I, I was on the bus coming home from school and Johnny told me that he was from Philadelphia, so I just thought I'd come home and ask where I came from. See, now I'm certain that if you were all in class with me, there'd be uproarious laughter. <clears throat> but you see the point, right? Thank you, Neil, I appreciate it, right? You, you get the point in that had she just taken the time to ask a question or two, she could have saved herself all that drama and maybe, maybe not have stunted the growth of her nine-year-old because that's not absolutely, absolutely not what he was asking, right? So you've got to ask some more questions to make sure that you're answering the right questions and, and, then, and then utilize that, those techniques that we're going, to, uh, we're going to throw your way next week and the week after to make sure that you're, um, you're really in consultant mode. Okay, who knows why we're talking about this? Because I haven't the slightest idea why we're talking about this. Oh, because it, we, we went from our, we went from our, our uh, conversation about the job description. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <clears throat> so the rest of our time together today, let's see, it is 6.03. <laughs> Six oh three. Let's do this. Um, let's switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about some of the things that you can be doing um, with your database right now. I know we've touched on this a little bit each day uh, and, and I'm going to spend some time on it again today because as I've said, I think this is now number 18, right? For those of you who are keeping track, just make little, little, little tick marks, right? The 18th time we've said this this week is, is if you're not leaning in and having conversations with your database, you are putting paychecks, for August and September in jeopardy. Can I share something that we learned today at Productivity Coaching? No, I'm sorry, you've already spoken twice. You've hit your limit. I'm well, sorry. Okay. no, I'm kidding, Silva, so go ahead. Oh, okay. No, because I'm so excited with everything that we learned in uh, Jen's class, it's unbelievable. Like, uh, literally, every day between 9.30 and 10.30, I'm learning something new. And, um, and uh, we work as a group and we created this email, uh, which um, I, I probably will just create a step-by-step -step how to follow this. And maybe I will send it to you so you can distribute to the people in Ignite. Because we created this for the, even Jen didn't know how to do it. She did it for the first time today. And what, so, what was it? Give it's, us the it's first like, yeah. uh, Okay, so we go and create our landing page on command, and then we grab the link to save money for our clients. We went to the scripts that are currently absolutely brand new scripts uh, from command, how we can save some money and time to our clients. 
So we create the email, we implement the landing page, and uh, we send a bulk email to, like I can send now this email to all 1,500 people in my database, which I actually plan to do. And we already started to get responses back. So, so just to shortcut, shortcut what you're saying, you're, you're doing a mass email to your database that then is sending, sending them to a specific landing page. And, and what's the landing page telling them? It's my landing page, which is telling them how they can refinance. And also it is an email with four live links, how to save money, how to do this, how to do this. It's all created by Keller Williams. Yeah, so that's awesome. So what you're talking about is, is reaching out to your database and providing resource, right? Yes. Which is different than, than part of the, a big part of the reason that most of you don't call your database regularly which, and when I say regularly, based on what we saw uh, on the 36 Touch uh, earlier this week, that's four times a year, right? The reason most of you don't do that is because you think the reason you're calling them is to beg and troll for business, right? And, and if, if, you'll, if you'll take a different, uh, a different mindset on that and recognize that you're calling them to offer a service and to check in with them to see how they are and to provide resources for them, on all these different things that Silva just talked about, you'd be calling them every week, right? Do you care about them enough to love on them, right? That, that's, what, that's what client acquisition really is. It's a, it's a version of just loving on people over and over and over again, so that when they think of real estate, they think of you because they, they think about loving back on you, right? Love that, thank you for sharing that. So one of the things that uh, one of the things that uh, I was thinking about earlier <clears throat> that I'm not sure we've spoken about yet is the idea of for those of you um, who have been in, in uh, any of my classes for the last three or four months um, what was the what was the uh, pivot point from maybe six months ago or so through um, through the end of, of last year and into the beginning of this year that many of you built into your business plans when we did the business planning clinic right. It was it was a it was a focus that we were taking this year to to move from just touching the database to actually hosting client events. 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 There we go. Right. So it was all about events, and and we've worked we've worked tirelessly to really kind of brainstorm through what kind of events are you doing, how are you driving people to the events, uh, knowing that what we found in the past twelve to eighteen months is that is that agents who ultimately do, do at least six to 10 client events every single year. Now, I know some of you are like, oh my God, right? I, I'm not a wedding planner, I'm a real estate agent. And yet, for those of you who struggle with phone lead generating, phone client acquisition, what we found is that those people love a party, right? And so instead of, instead of planting yourself in front of a phone and, and forcing yourself to call people that you don't really know for reasons that you're not really comfortable with. Instead, when you take a different focus and look at your database as people who know you, like you, trust you, and are also predisposed to do business with you, and then just host events for those people over and over and over again, giving, coming from contribution, right? Loving on them. But that's just as valid a way to, to connect and remind people about what you do for a living and have them want to reciprocate for all those awesome client events by passing you referrals, right? It, it, and so, so that was the whole focus. Well, of course, client events right now, I know some of you, I, I, some of you, I think Kimberly uh, minimally had something scheduled in the market center that she had to cancel, right? Didn't you have a, a buyer event scheduled that you had to cancel? Yeah, right. And so, and I think, I think Donna had something with wine. I remember that conversation, right? And so, so there's, there's stuff that we were all scheduling that has now been postponed. And I get that. And yet I was thinking, gee, I wonder what, if this is really going to be another four or six or eight weeks, I'm not sure we can, we can afford that much time without some kind of an event. And so, so I've been thinking about how can we do events in this in this uh, environment, and the answer is this way: the same way we can continue to host classes, right? How are you designing events and then zooming them out? 
are, are you, should, should we be working on a, on a first time home buyer seminar, right? Some of you were working on first time home buyer seminars. Let's work on one anyway and just zoom it out, push it out to your database, post it on Facebook and then zoom it out. Right? How, how many, if this goes on too much longer, it's going to be time for another investor seminar. Understand, I'm not going to stop doing the investor seminars. I promised them to you uh, uh, quarterly so that you could invite your databases to, to start becoming investors. We're not going to stop. The last one we did, I think, was February, right? So that's March, April, May. By, by mid-May, if we're still in quarantine, guess what? We're doing Zoom versions of, of investor seminars, right? And so I want you to start thinking about things that you can do with your database utilizing technology, utilizing this platform to stay in touch. Maybe it's just something fun. Maybe you have a, a, a 5 to 5.30 Zoom happy hour, right? Where everybody just gets on, has their adult beverage of choice, and just starts to, to chat. You leave everybody's mic open, and it's noisy, and, it's, and people are talking over each other, and, like, and who cares? Because all it is is getting everybody together, right? The conversation doesn't ever have to be about real estate because here's what's important. What they know is that you're the one who got everyone together. You get the credit for being the, the organizer of that. And then when you do it again, you start to become known for being the organizer of that. People in your database know that you're a real estate agent. They just, just, they just keep looking for, for reasons to want to say thank you to you, right? Referrals are a thank you either for, for having done a good job or for all the other things that you've done for me since you did that good job, right? Because here's what I've learned in 21 years of real estate. You do an awesome job and in about 15 minutes, they forget you did an awesome job, right? And it's our job to keep reminding them, not necessarily about the awesome job, but reminding them that we're, we're still around, right? And so, so utilizing this, uh, and Kimberly, I'll get there in a second, utilizing this, uh, this platform to help you have, host those client events, I, I, I think it still works. And if we, if we want to have a mastermind next week around, around ideas for Zoom events, I'm happy to put that on the calendar. As a matter of fact, I think we should do that. So, um, do, do, Donna, could you do me a favor and just email or text me? Um, Zoom events, and we'll, we'll put that on the calendar, and we'll just, we'll just have a mastermind. Everyone can just kind of come on and throw ideas around so that we can all be, be um, pushing these things out. Sorry. There, uh, yes, Bogdan, go ahead. I'm going to have my uh, meetup uh, for the investors April 15th on Zoom. Oh, that's great. That's great, right? So, so Bogdan runs a, a, an investor meetup. Um, typically, it's, typically, it's in Fairfield, isn't it, Bogdan? No, Norwalk. Uh, in Norwalk, sorry, yes, typically in Norwalk, now via Zoom, right? What else can you be doing to reach out to your database? <clears throat> know that the investor seminar is coming back uh, by the end of, of May, whether we're live or, or via Zoom, so you can push people to that. Um, and let, let's keep thinking about other things that we can be doing via Zoom so that you have an opportunity to be in front of your, of your folks. Make sense? That's exciting, right? Events are back, baby, woo -hoo! Who says we can't do events while we're quarantined? All right, what do you wanna talk about? We have 10 minutes left. Does anybody have questions? Rick, I have a quick question about- Yes, Fiona. I have a lot of people on my database, to 2000 plus, and um, I'm, probably spending too much time talking with individuals and I, I don't know whether I should be focusing on uh, quality with a few people or I should just be trying to shoot through my database so I'm a bit feel a bit compromised got it so, and that's a great point and a great question so let's let's address that because it will uh, I'm sure I'm sure you know not the only person who's wondering uh, what the answer is there and I think the answer is not or I think it's and Right, and so, so I would look at your entire database as uh, because of what's going on outside of our four walls, the, the, the need to touch every single person 
is, is enormous, right? You, you, need, you need to be able to check the box that every person in your database, again, for, from your, for, when we're talking about your sphere of influence, right? If, if you have a, a, an 8,000 person database and half the people in there, you don't even know who they are and they don't know you, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your sphere of influence, your raving fans, your, your past clients, right? Friends and family, that, that, that group of people. Get through every single one of them. And if it's every single one of them with shorter conversations, that's okay, right? Sometimes they get, uh, they get, they get lengthy, that's okay. I will give you a, a quick script that helps limit the phone conversations, right? So I'm gonna, I, I call Chris and I'm like, hey, Chris, it's Rick Scott. Listen, I, I'm just, I, I'm just uh, have 10 minutes before an appointment arrives or an appointment, a Zoom appointment, right? So if you're, if you're working from home, before a Zoom appointment, and I wanted to just give you a quick call and see how things were going. So, so you set up as you start the call that you have a limited amount of time, knowing full well that that, that, next, that appointment is actually your next phone call, right? To just limit the, the opportunity. Because so, what I know is, you know, Chris is a really big talker and he'll talk my ear off. And so now we're having this 40 minute conversation and I get through three people in my database, right? Go ahead, Debbie. And I think it's a combination of media or channels that will mm. help you get through it. Um, because I think there are some people, it's almost, Rick had uh, showed us the, the screen for the 36 touch and the 19 touch, 19 to connect and 36 to solidify or whatever they call it now. Um, and the, um, the distinction is um, that you can do, the ones who are more distant, who are um, perhaps across the country, I think you do with electronic media and you blend that um, as well. Perhaps you make some outbound phone calls, but you focus in on your nearer, the nearest and dearest, we call them, right? And then, um, and use text and, and um, Silva is right. Command has so many aspects that can help you do that mass communication much more efficiently. So work on that, come to those classes and come to the, com this is a, a little bit of a self-promotion, but the, um, the command users group, ask your question there and we can show you how to do that and, and blend those channels to get maximum result. Yeah, indeed. And Debbie, I'll say this, a shameless plug never hurt anybody. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Debbie facilitates the command users group. So do watch for that next week. Uh, I don't remember what day it's on, but do look at the calendar and, and, and check that out. Rick, right, so, yes, ma'am. Would you be able to share one more time the, the calendar that you draw, you already got rid of it? I, I want to take a picture of it. That one? Yes, hold on, thank you. So the other side of that question, I think, I think points us to, uh, Fiona's question points us to the conversation, and we can maybe close today with this conversation. Um, it's, it's the conversation about raving fans, right? About, about that segment of your, uh, of your database that, that you do love, love on more, right? That you do spend more time, effort, and typically money on right you good silva okay uh so so maybe where you're spending more time is are, are those you know do you have raving fans in your database what what's a raving fan can someone can someone describe a raving fan to me how would how would you describe a raving fan in your uh in your database who is sending you five referrals per year Right, so, so you get to create the, the, um, the criteria, but it is someone who is either already shown that they can send you business, whether they're a past client or not, right? They can send you business and, and do so often, or in my world, someone that could or should be. Like if someone is in, is in my database and they're the president of, of you know, an elementary school PTA, I, I want to be loving on that person, right? Because they know everybody in that school. They know all the parents in that school, 
whether your kids go there or not, doesn't, doesn't matter anymore, right? So, so are there people in your database who are passing you business or should be passing you business that you can create raving fans out of, right? I love that. What else? What, how else might you categorize a raving fan? Someone that would never think of anyone else but, but you in, in your field. It's exactly right, right? The raving fan in my book is at a party in a, in like in a crowded room. Well, not today, please hear. <laughs> so so this, is either, this is either a month ago or three months from now in a crowded room in a party, right? And so um, today we'd be doing a Zoom party. And, and so I, I just don't have a great example of Zoom party. So they're at this party in this crowded room on one side of the, uh, of the crowded room with, with loud noise and music going. And on the other side of the room, someone in not even a massively loud voice says something to the effect of, hey, I think I might want to sell my house. And that person from across the room with like bionic ears hears that runs across the room, knocking six people out of the way as they go to say, did I hear you say something about selling a house? Do you know Chris DiBiase? Because if you don't know him, I have to connect you with him because you cannot do anything in real estate without calling Chris, right? It's that kind of person, right? A hundred percent right. And sometimes those people occur naturally. And sometimes you have to help build those people, right? You have to find people who have that personality, who have that, who have that naturally, um, and then start loving on them. Because part of the part of the uh, part of the the cool thing about loving on people is that it is a natural reaction when you love on someone for reciprocity. They want to love on you back, and the way that they love on you back is by passing you referrals. Make sense? So in a, in a post quarantine world, how are we, how would we love on, how would we love on our, our raving fans? What are some of the things that you've done to make sure you're loving on, maybe it's just five people in your database. If you're lucky, it's 10 or 15 people in your database. But I'm going to tell you what, work on finding five first. What are you doing to love on them? I send a simple $5 Starbucks gift card when I get a referral from somebody and I cannot tell you the thanks I get. It's the silliest thing actually. And I love it because I can put it in a card and I can write a nice note with it. I love that. I love that, right? And, and so here's my thought. Do that with every single person in your database, right? Raving fan or not, the $5 or the $10 gas card or, or coffee shop card or whatever, that's the thank you for anybody who ever sends you a referral. And, and here's the mistake some people make. Some people make the mistake of sending some kind of thank you for a referral when the property closes, when the referral actually closes. That is a mistake. But what Kim said was something very different. She said, I'm rewarding the behavior that I want to see repeated. It doesn't matter if those people ever close, right? I want people to think about me and pass me and pass me the referrals over and over and over again, right? If, if it's a coffee shop card, find those coffee holics and, and like dangle that card in front of them. What do you got for me? What do you got for me? Right? And, and reward that behavior. And, and so from that perspective, if, if it's one of your raving fans who passes you a lot of business, Maybe, it, maybe, it's, maybe it's something bigger and better, right? Every time that they have a, they have a, a, a referral comes, comes your way, maybe you take them out to dinner. I, I took, I took um, my sellers uh, to the salt cave of Darien. And so I had um, the cave with 12 of us and, and it was really cool. And they said it was something so different that they would remember for the rest of their lives. Yeah, that's a great, great idea of Fiona, right? Some kind of event. And I love the fact that, that, that what Fiona did was, A, she involved herself in that, right? So she put herself in the middle of that. And it wasn't just her and one of her raving fans. It was all of her raving fans so that now they could rave, raving fan to each other, right? So, so it just kind of builds the tribe of, of raving fans around Fiona's business. You see how that works? What else? What else are you doing? Again, and, and, and I'm not talking necessarily about in our, in, our, um, uh, in our environment today. 
What are you doing with raving fans? Um, last summer, I opened um, during the opening weekend of Lion King. I and and a lender and an attorney rented out the theater and invited them all. Um, so it was great because I got a chance to not only have my raving fans there, but I got a chance to meet other raving fans of the attorney and the lender. So that if wow. anyone's looking for a realtor, I'm there. there and go. it was really because one of my raving fans actually posted on Facebook that I was doing this for my clients, my fans. And she said, what has your realtor done for you lately? And posted that publicly on Facebook. I could not have paid her more. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, so there's another great opportunity. Make sure you invite someone who really is connected on social media and, if, and, and maybe even give them that script Kimberly just did. If you have to pay them to post it, it's worth it, right? It's totally worth it, right? What have you done for me lately? So um, one other thing what I've, I've seen on Facebook that I've, you know, on the different groups, um, it, Easter is coming up and, you know, some of us as a kid got Easter baskets. So what someone is putting together, another agent, another state is putting together um, sanit um, deter um, sanitizer baskets. So like it's like a roll, not a, a roll of toilet paper, you know, hand disinfectant, um, wipes, and they're wrapping it up in like cellophane, pretty color cellophane, tying it up and are going to leave it on their raving fans porch or front step ring the doorbell and run and beep beep on their way out so that it's something cool that they have, right? We all know we need it, but it's something that, you know, if you happen to be out and you find sanitizer, let's put some baskets together and you will be remembered. I love that. You, you know, that, that gives me an idea, Kimberly. I, I think what I might do is I might go home. If you have five raving fans, wrap two rolls of toilet paper, and deliver some toilet paper to each of those raving fans and say, hey, you know what? I'm just thinking about you. Wanted to make sure that you were all set. Bring, bring them some toilet paper. They'll laugh, they'll remember it. And who knows, maybe they really need some toilet paper, right? You may be saving somebody up from using something scratchy, right? All of those things, all those things are such great ideas, right? Eat both in today's environment and after today's environment. Uh, th there's a couple more that we can share. We'll, we'll uh, maybe pick this up on, uh, on Monday because we are just uh, ticking out of time. Uh, before we go, I wanna say uh, two things. First and foremost, um, please do remember if you weren't on the 430 call, uh, both market centers do have masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer if you are heading out with buyers uh, if you have sellers who have, uh, who have okayed physical showings, we do have some of those uh, safety tools for you. Uh, we want to get them in your hands. So just reach out to your market center leadership and we'll arrange to, um, to get them to you in some way, shape or form uh, when you need them. Uh, any, any of our guests that might be on this call, if, if you're short on that and you need that, please just reach out to, um, to either Dan or Steve, and we'll, we'll make arrangements to put that in your hands as well. We wanna keep everyone as safe as possible. Uh, and so if you're heading out to do, uh, to do work, let's make sure that we've got all the, all the paraphernalia to make sure that you are healthy uh, when the restrictions are lifted to really experience that, uh, that pop. And the last thing I want to uh, just share with you, for those of you who are on the 430 call, uh, you maybe saw this. Uh, it, it is a, an irreverent way to, uh, to send you uh, home this evening or send you out this evening. And yet, um, I kind of thought it was pretty funny. So, uh, so uh, I did ask a special guest to join us for the uh, last minute and a half of our time together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, if I can find him. Where is he? Boy, I built it all up and then I didn't deliver. Sorry about that. Hold on a second. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Without further ado. Spray. This is no joke. It's no time to work or roam. Okay. Uh, who can I see? Somebody just give me a thumbs up that that sound was coming through.
Yes? Okay. So yes. Let, me start, let me start it again. My friend and yours, Mr. Samuel L. Jackson. Spread it. This is no joke. It's no time to work or roam. The way you can fight it is simple, my friends. Just stay the at home. Now, technically, I'm not a doctor, but my listen when I read a poem. So here I am, Sam and Jackson, imploring you, keep your ass at home. If you want things to get back to normal, don't panic. Just use your dome. Wash your hands, stop touching your face, and stay the f at home. Motherfucker, it's no time to gamble. Look around, you're not at a casino. Just stay the f home as if your name was Trenton Quarantino. Sure, you can still see your friends. Use the mother app on your phone. But unless you just ran out of groceries, please stay the f at home. Thank you for doing your part to flatten the curve because that is steep. And now that you're home, please feel free to go the f to sleep. All right, guys, have a great night. Thank you so much to Samuel L. Jackson for helping us kick off the weekend. Have a great 